Hey, Gerbs, good to see you again. Thank you. A um, couple nights ago, uh, Torch said that the effort that the team put out reminded him of last year and, and what, what kind of energy all you guys from Cleveland brought up. How much do you want to add to that tonight, especially since there's been another loss in between there and, and uh, get this thing kind of going in the right direction? Yeah, I don't think I really focus on uh, too much in terms of just what I need to bring and, and help this team and, you know, kind of, you know, this is a chance for me to just get in the lineup to play games. I haven't played too many games, whether, you know, it's Cleveland or here. So I'm looking forward to playing games. I, I enjoy playing games and I enjoy playing uh, with energy. That's for sure. Yeah. How weird has all that been in Cleveland with the starts and stops with COVID and whatnot and everything else that's impacted things? Yeah. It's, I mean, just like probably everybody else and in, in what they do in their jobs, it's just a lot of uh, outside factors that you can't control. So a lot of long pauses without playing games. So just, you know, different in general, but you know, I, I know, I know everyone's going through the same stuff. Torts was out a little bit ago and he referenced the fact that the teams are maybe taking a few more liberties right now than they should be. Um, what's, what's the, what's the reaction to that? What's the appropriate reaction to that? If teams start uh, maybe disrespecting what you guys are trying to get done. Oh, I mean, I think, I think the hardest teams to play against are the teams that just continuously come every, every single shift. It's not, no, it's not necessarily going to be the fighting. It's not necessarily going to be talking. It's going to be, you know, every shift they're coming, they're competing, they're hard on pucks. Those, you know, those are the teams that will get respect and, and those are the teams that are hard to play against. So, you know, I think that's just something we can focus on. That's something that this group can do definitely is be, be competitive every single shift. Yeah, sounds like you just described your game. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, it's me, kind of me in a nutshell. <laughs> All right, perfect. Good to have you back, Herbs. Thank you very much. Okay, next we'll go to Mark Shai. Go ahead, Mark. Thank you, Glenn. Nathan, welcome back. Um, you. Yeah, just you know, being a veteran leader, you've been around the NHL for several years. Is this a situation where maybe you can find opportunities to give advice or help younger players along, especially to try to get out of this funk? Yeah, I think every time you get to play a game, it's a it's a you know it's a great opportunity and and you know, as you get older and you really reflect on, on your career and you, and you watch, you know, a lot of the games like I've watched this year, it's, it's an honor and it's a privilege to, to put on that jersey to get your name called to go into the lineup in, in the National Hockey League. And, you know, sometimes maybe uh, players take that for granted. And, you know, I, I, I've, I'm always pumped and, and jacked when you get that call because, you know, it's just like playing your first game again. Um, and, and we went through it last year a little bit when I played those same thing. I feel like it was my first National Hockey League game because it's such an honor and privilege to play. That uh, you know, I hope uh, I hope some some players keep that in their mind. And you know, the career goes by fast, so you never want to you never want to look back and leave crumbs. And you know, in crumbs, I mean regrets in your career. And you know, I try to try to approach each game as it's been my last one and my first one. Yeah, and thinking back to the end of your Buffalo tenure, I think that was kind of when the Sabers were really starting to kind of go down a little bit is there anything that you can draw from that experience from the end of that to now like are there comparisons that maybe you can draw into the situation yeah it was a, it was a you know it's frustrating right going through it I know a lot of these guys it, it is frustrating they, they built such a such a great culture here the last last I think five years and especially the last three three years have been outstanding here and you know when you see see that slip away a little bit you, you know as a player as myself I, I want to just come in and try to try to help a little bit try to stabilize um, character and, and, and I guess to go back from Buffalo is a long time ago so it's hard to remember but I just remember just the culture changing a bit and it is just uh just wasn't the same anymore and, and that's and that's that's the onus is on the players the players got to hold the accountability in that locker room and, and keep the standard high and you know maybe that's something that slipped during that time in Buffalo I can't remember but you know in this situation here it's up to the guys in the room and there's still high character guys in that room that can hold the accountability level high and, and that's where it needs to start. And Nathan, from your experience, does it take a while to be able to rebuild something like that if it's slipped down? It's taken them a long time, Buffalo. So, you know, it's every organization is different. And, and, and the players that are still in this locker room are still high character guys. And, and, you know, I reference again that, you know, guys in here can do that. They can, you know, hold each other accountable and they can't play hard every night. And that's, that's something we're just going to have to do every single game, every single shift to, to prove that to, management and other teams coaching staff that you know this this room can still be you know valued as a high character group thank you nathan thank you